What's up, family? Andre here. Over the last six months, with the new Biden administration putting forth a number of pieces of legislation to try to address the financial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a lot of discussion about income thresholds, tax thresholds, and so on today's episode, we are going to address the difference between adjusted gross income and net income. But before we get knee deep in the weeds on those two subjects, please don't forget to smash that like button and hit that subscriber button as well as the bell next to it to get updated weekly content. What is adjusted gross income? Adjusted gross income is your annual gross income minus certain adjustments that the IRS takes into consideration to be able to determine your income tax liability for the year. In layman's terms, gross income is simply all of the money that you've been able to accumulate within a calendar year. Those could include wages, dividends, capital gains, interest income, royalties, rental income, alimony, and retirement distributions. Many states within the U.S. use the AGI that is calculated on your federal return to be able to determine the state income tax that individuals owe. What they do is make certain adjustments that are state specific by taking the adjusted gross income from your federal return and applying credits and deductions that are allowed within each state to come up with the overall tax liability that you may owe in that particular state. The item subtracted from your gross income to be able to calculate your AGI is referred to as adjustments to income and you report these on Schedule 1 of your tax return when you file your annual tax return. Here are a few of the most common adjustments that are used to calculate AGI. Alimony payments, early withdrawal penalties on savings accounts, educator expenses, employee benefits, employee business expenses for military reservists, performing artists, state and local government employees, as well as employees with impairment-related expenses. HSA, or health savings account deductions, moving expenses for members of the armed services, self-employed SEP, simple, and other qualified plans, self-employment tax, as well as self-employment health care deductions, student loan interest, school tuition and fees. One of the most important factors in understanding AGI is how to be able to calculate adjusted gross income. First, you take all of the compensation that you've been paid throughout the year. That would include salary, hourly wages, any tips, bonuses, stocks, or anything that is a part of any compensation package that you were paid throughout the year. Next, you would take any other taxable income that comes from other sources. That can include the sale of any property or businesses. It can also include any unemployment compensation, pension payments, social security payments, or any other income that has not been reported to the IRS. Next, you would subtract the appropriate adjustments, such as I mentioned before, which could include alimony, and the resulting figure is the adjusted gross income. To determine your taxable income, you will either subtract the standard deduction or the total itemized deduction that are allowable under your particular classification. Most people will choose either or and whichever one provides them with the greatest benefit. If you would like a full list of all of the itemized deductions that are allowable under your particular classification, go to the IRS website where they list all of those itemized deductions for your reference. Your AGI also affects your eligibility for many of the deductions and credits that are available on your tax return. In general, the lower the AGI, the more deductions and credits that you're able to take advantage of and thus reduce the amount of taxes that you owe in a particular year. Let's look at a quick example of how itemized deductions can affect your AGI. For example, in one particular calendar year, let's say you've had a number of medical expenses. You can use that as an itemized deduction, and if it exceeds more than 7.5% of 
of your AGI, you will be able to deduct that from your adjusted gross income. So if those medical bills total $12,000 and you have an adjusted gross income of $100,000, you can be able to deduct the amount that exceeds the 7.5%, in this case would be $7,500 that it exceeds, and that amount would be $4,500 that you can be able to deduct from your AGI. In addition to AGI, some government programs such as the Child Tax Credit which I mentioned in my child tax credit video, is using a term called MAGI, which stands for Modified Adjusted Gross Income. This figure starts with adjusted gross income and then adds back certain items such as student loan interest or education tuition and fees back into the number to come up with the MAGI. Two key areas where Modified Adjusted Gross Income are used Roth IRA, and the Affordable Care Act. In order for you to understand how much you can be able to contribute within a calendar year to your Roth IRA, modified adjusted gross income is used to determine that calculated amount. The same goes for the Affordable Care Act and understanding how much insurance you can be able to apply for through the Affordable Care Act. Modified adjusted gross income is used in this particular process as well to be able to determine that amount. There are a number of other special considerations that AGI is used for just to be able to confirm certain information. For example, when you file your taxes and are determined what your AGI is for one particular year, the next year when you go to file your taxes, that previous year AGI is used to verify your identity. What is net income? Net income is your take-home pay. It's the amount of money that goes into your pocket after you pay taxes and other deductions from your wages or salary that you earn. These taxes and deductions are taken from your gross income to arrive at your net income, which is distributed to you either on a monthly, bi-weekly, or weekly basis. Some of the most common taxes that are taken out of gross income would include federal income tax, state income tax, possibly any local or municipal tax, social security tax, as well as a Medicare tax. Again, these are taken typically out of your gross income and then you are able to arrive at the final net income. In addition to the taxes and other deductions that can be taken out of gross income, employees may elect to have certain deductions for benefits coming out of their gross income as well. That can include any deductions for health and dental insurance, any sponsored retirement plans such as 401ks or 403bs, as well as any flexible spending accounts such as HSAs. In a very similar fashion to the way individuals are classifying gross income versus net income, Businesses also are able to classify it in terms of gross revenue versus net revenue. They take the same principles and are applying them in the business world as well. That would include having gross revenues, which is the value of all goods and services, minus any particular deductions or expenses to arrive at a net revenue or a net income number. Let's look at the key takeaways for AGI, MAGI, and net income. Gross income is the total amount of money that an individual makes within a particular calendar year, which includes salary, wages, bonuses, and capital gains. Adjusted gross income, or AGI, is the amount of taxable income after itemized deductions or standard deductions from the gross income number. Net income is used by both businesses and individuals while AGI is only applicable to individuals. Adjusted gross income is reported and calculated by the IRS on Schedule 1 and Schedule A of Form 1040. The IRS uses adjusted gross income to determine your tax liability for a particular calendar year. AGI is calculated by taking all income, otherwise known as your gross income, and subtracting certain adjustments to income. Your AGI can affect the size of certain tax deductions as well as your eligibility for certain retirement plans. 
Modified adjusted gross income is simply adjusted gross income with certain deductions added back in, such as student loan interest or education tuition and fees. For most people, AGI and MAGI are the same number. And that is it. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the three distinctions between MAGI, AGI, and net income. This is a clear distinction and many people need to have a better grasp of, of the difference between how much money you supposedly make versus how much money you keep. Please don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscriber button, as well as the bell next to it to get updated weekly content. Thank you for tuning in.